Hi, Bill Pattis, Art of Illusion. Welcome back to our episode of Working in Values. Uh, we're doing a short study of, of some mountains and how just a few little subtleties between each one adds the depth. I'm using black and white. Start out with a very light gray, um, off white into the canvas up into the sky. And uh, probably about a number two in the value chart. And we're we'll talking about composition, sharp edge, soft edge. And so when you're looking at this painter or anyone else, and that's one thing I'm always trying to do is I'm painting them, let the painting talk to me or come to me, which sounds kind of crazy, but as artists, we always sound kind of crazy when we talk about doing paintings, but it's like music, you hear things, and the more you see and feel where you kind of, after a while you'll learn to know where to go to certain things, and there's not from experience or just practice, because you, you can practice or um, you know, paint forever and not really see it, but when you master these subtleties, again, the lights, the values, edges, composition, so as I've shown before, one little sharper point right there really pushes this farther back. I'm going to push right in into another one. I'm just going to again bring in maybe a kind of a mountainscape with not even worrying about where we're going as far as into the front. I'm going to come in and put another value, another row of hills, if it were. Maybe back and do here. And keep saying, I'm drawing with a brush. Now, if we were going to do this layout, then yes, we could do it with pencil or charcoal. And I made sure it didn't offset this one underneath. Now, if we had our chart up the side here, you'd see this is probably a number four, maybe a five. But now look how, plus look how we're playing. This one's in, this one's in this way, swinging back and forth. And I may just push this one off a little bit more over the hill, over the edge. That's what I'll do, just bring in. I like to leave them a little bit better. Push this right forward. Now I don't want to tee this right up through here is what I've done. So we are going to put another mountain in. So let me just bring this out a little bit farther. And I do a lot of this on my paintings. It freaks people out at times. I'll come in and actually do something I don't want to do. Put marks into it just to kind of show those. Um, and sometimes it's, you tell people what you're doing, but when you actually do it, something wrong gets their attention. And I've done it on people's paintings. They don't appreciate it quite as much. Want to mess their paintings up to get their attention. So now this is again, is it maybe just a hill rolling hill, kind of like that sharp edge, soft edge, that little break in the action. Look how this, the first one back here, went up the never never land off the nothing. I'll come back over here again. Come back and redarken that one a little bit more through here. But isn't that neat how this is just kind of rolling through the hills and because this is nothing white paint that back inside it really created a mist and I'm going to come back and do another row of hill in front of this so I may just push two colors now if we were dealing with three or four colors as the tendency would be or maybe so many times when you're watching your painting with someone or I know so many times in my classes and if I'm using three colors and they're painting with me, even though it's the same type of composition, lights and darks, every time we mix, they would then say, did you add the, whatever it was, blue and brown, or did you add the blue and yellow? And here it's either lights and darks. You're adding more white, more dark, um, which makes it a little bit easier, not easier to paint, but maybe easier to see at times. So we start looking at this, when I start critiquing, again, I love this little part here. I love this little part back in here, because that little magical part. And there's like little ridges inside of our hills, which I might bring another one up uh, in front of this one. So right now we have three hills, which would be fairly easy to do as, as far as nice composition. We could bring this up down in here, but just as a study, I want to maybe bring another one in a little bit farther, bring it down a little bit closer through here. And I may just push this one up a little bit more. Let's see how, there we go, a little bit darker. And I use the word study because when I'm painting in class or in, in a demonstration or just sake of teaching myself learning, because if it's a study when we're trying to do a master work, a masterpiece, and or it's maybe a commission piece, we're trying to put all this emotional baggage into it. And sometimes it's not always fun when we're doing those. But if it were a study that you were going to throw away or wipe off and not worry about it quite as much, and just more in that process of two, twofold enjoying and learning. And to me, if we're not enjoying what we're learning, well, I didn't do very well in school. <laughs> I didn't enjoy school too much, especially all those trips to the principal's office, but that's a whole other thing. And so many of those trips to the principal's office because I was doing my drawings and my books instead of studying my books. 
Um, so anyways, as we start looking at how we look at perception, how we look at either from photographs and, and looking at natural uh, things in the, in the fold, your eye is trying to cipher out, again, what it sees. And when you're looking at mountain, your brain says, wow, mountains. But it's because so many times we see the atmospheric ones. Now, when people see them up close, if you can see this one, where it's nothing, for someone who's never painted, and you first get into painting, especially a lot of my engineers in class, it's hard to understand for them to understand why that soft edge, because it's a mountain. And yet they see them when they're out there. So, it's again, as we do more of this study inside of here, it's what we've done, what little we've done today. Contrast, sharp, soft, that beautiful little atmospheric part right through there. So I think we'll just stop on this one again and probably finish it out on our next episode and bring, maybe bring another row of hills in. But again, I hope this really starts to help understand simpli simplicity and values in your composition. And I keep stressing this one. I don't mean to be redundant, but whatever you're painting, not just paint it black and white. Do two tones, three tones. Do something in brown, something in green, something in purples. And again, as I say, if you can't handle two, you can't handle seven or eight. And, uh, and because this one had a lot of white into it, it looks on one, if you see it on camera, it looks very bluish. I did more washes in here, so as a, we've shown so many times in our limited palettes, as two colors may look like three and four, three colors may look like five and six. So anyway, next time we'll come back and finish this out. So we'll see you then.